Hello everyone. How are you doing today? I hope you all are having a good day or have had a good day. And if you haven't had a good day, remember, you will have a good day and things will get better. And I want to thank everyone that has subscribed, liked, commented, and shared. Thank you so much for that. That keeps me encouraged. And to those that doesn't know me, my name is Lakedra. And I thank you all that has come on here who are standing for your marriages. God will honor you for that. And he will give you what he promised. Know this. But what I want to get in today is a few things. You know, I want to show you how the enemy works. So he won't trip you guys up. Because he, he is a very uh, conny creature that God created the Bible tells us in Genesis how the enemy works he's very cunning he's very smart he's full of trickery and Jesus says in his word he told the disciples he said you know I want you all to be wiser than the serpent and harmless as a dove he called the, the he called Satan a serpent Meaning he, he he's very trickery. He's full of tricks and tactics. And he has a lot of deception. In fact, he can even turn the very things you, you think you know. He could turn it against you and confuse you. This is why we have to really allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. Jesus says in John 14. You have to. He, he's 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 a masterminder. He's he's he can outsmart us. And I want you all to look at this as I take you all in the chapter of Second Corinthians, chapter two, where, where Paul exposed how the enemy worked. And you know we we have to pay attention to this, guys. Take note of this enemy, so you'll know how to play your cards right. Which is what I mentioned to you all in one of my other videos. I'm telling you. And, uh, you know, one of our precious standards also had asked uh, for me to bring this out and show what this enemy is like, which is very important, you know, because the body of Christ need to know this. We need to know how to win. If we're in a battle, you have to have a strategy. There's no need in coming trying to fight in a battle and you don't know what kind of enemy you're dealing with. You won't know how to, you know, defend yourself. You won't know how to overcome him. And the Bible shows us how to do it. We just have to open up our eyes, open up our ears, be open-minded, and allow the Lord to, to show us. Because if you do it your way, you're going to lose. And many of us all know what that looks like, you know, trying to do things our way. Because the Bible talks about it in Proverbs. The Bible tells us in all thy getting, get wisdom and understanding. Because it is the principal key. The Bible says that wisdom can conquer a whole city. So, you know, it's no need in us standing up against this enemy. We don't know what we're dealing with. We need to know how to play our cards right. Or we need to know how to respond when things come up against us out of nowhere. You know, and I, I can tell you guys, I, I've been there. I, I, I've had, I have had this to happen to me in the past many, many of, uh, of times. You know, and it's, 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 it brings great losses when you don't know what to do. Painful losses. Things that you look back on and regret, you know. And so we don't want to live our lives filled with regrets, you know, saying, Lord, I wish I would have knew better. You know, I wish I, I, I would have known now what I knew then. And many of us can relate to that. But it's okay. It's never too late to learn. And because of those mistakes that I have made, it has taught me. You know, how to be wise, how to study, how to wait on the Lord and how to allow the Holy Spirit to teach me because it, it could be a big loss, you know, something that you cannot afford. So uh, I thought that it was very important to talk about this today. And I'm sure it's going to be a blessing to you all. And I pray that you all take heed to what I'm about to get into because if you don't, I'm telling you, you won't see the victory over this thing. 
you know, for the restoration of your marriage. All this plays a part, people of God. You know, I know we all like to, you know, pray, and but it takes more than prayer. It's going to take you obeying the instructions of God's word because it is filled with principles. It is filled with the wisdom of God. It is filled with strategies. You know, it's not like we can go and press some button and, okay, my marriage is finished. No, you got to work out, you know, the principal steps for to make your marriage work and 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 how to avoid trouble you have to learn how to do it it's just like in this real world that we are living in we have to learn how to keep up with what's happening in this world and look out for ourselves you know and 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 how to uh how to basically function in our world so that our world can go right. Well, it's the same way with the principles of God. You know, it's the same way with the spirit spiritual realm and, and with the in with us who are in the kingdom of God. There are things that you must know how to do so that all will prosper in your life in every area. You have it's gonna take wisdom. God is not going to always do everything for us, guys. He's going to be there, but eventually he's going to say, okay. He's going to start asking you the questions. What, what, what is my word teaching you? I want you to follow what my word says. I've laid it all out for you. But you have to trust my word and do what it says. And then you'll get the results. So that's why Jesus was a teacher. Jesus taught the disciples. And they had to... They had to actually take what they was taught and walk it out and do and obey his commands. And so all the instructions God has given us is a command. It's actually it's not an option or or something, you know, the word of the word is suggesting us to do. It is literally a command, meaning there is no other way out. It's only one way. Jesus said, and I am that way. The truth and the life. So you all, if you all want to have the victory in your marriages, I would suggest that you all take heed and follow the word of God. Take notes, do whatever you can, or listen to the videos over and over. Whichever is easier for you to do. But I'm telling you, I've learned the hard way, and so I don't want that for you all. But anyway, I'm going to start real quickly. I just had to get that out uh, first. So in chapter uh, 2 in 2 Corinthians, starting at the 5th verse, I want to go there real quickly. He says here, he said, I am not overstating it when I say that the man who caused all the troubles hurt you, hurt all of you more than he hurt me. Most of you opposed him. And that was punishment enough. Now, however, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he will be overcome by discouragement. So I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote to you as I did to test you and see if you will fully comply with my instructions. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit so that Satan will not outsmart us but we are familiar with his evil schemes and that is the truth and so for many of you all whose husband has walked out on you who has hurt you who has left you who has committed adultery all this sinful these sinful things that has broken your heart it's 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 time that we play our cards right it's time that we play our cards right you have to play your cards right because the enemy well, he wants you to act wrongly. He wants you to, to react in a ungodly way towards your spouse so that the marriage will never come back together. But in this man's case, here was, here was a man that had committed a sexual sin in the church. He, was, he had committed adultery. And so they had him removed. They had him removed and, and out of the church because they didn't want that to be an example for others and they fall into sin. And so what they did was they removed this man from out of the church because they wanted him to repent and he didn't want to. 
but then he did and so paul said you know it's time that we receive him back lest he get discouraged and really go out into the world and get involved in other things because the church shut him out because we shut the doors on this man it's time that we welcome him back we he have been punished enough you know he, he see now what he has done is wrong and so let us receive him back with love lest satan use these things against us by not welcoming him back or forgiving him he said because you know what kind of tactics the enemy come with you know you know his strategy we don't want this to out we don't want to let him outsmart us by not forgiving this man he said because we are familiar with this with this evil scheme see that's what the enemy wants he wants to keep division he don't want you to forgive your spouse he wants you to keep bringing up what they've done and he wants you know you to react when you find out that they done done something so you could say you know i'm filing for divorce i don't want you back up i wish you know i wouldn't have never married you and you know you ain't nothing and uh, you know you 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 going to hell or whatever we say cuss them out they got some some spouse and cussed each other out and this is what the enemy want he uses that but this is why paul is saying be careful you know, because he comes with this here. His spirit is working through your spouses, guys. I'm telling you. It's a spirit that's working behind the scene in the minds of your spouse. And so when they when they commit these terrible things against you, you find out about it. And now, because you're angry, you react wrong. And now what does it do? Makes it worse it makes it worse so this is why we, we we cannot allow ourselves to walk in anger we have to get rid of this that stronghold of being angry the bible says we can get angry but let us not sin you know because it don't bring forth the righteousness of god we must be quick to hear and slow to speak and slow to get angry but if you haven't been in your word or been reading the word and keeping your mind stayed on the law, you know, you, what time you hear in the bad news, you're going to react wrong. Why? Because you, you're going to do it out of your flesh. You didn't get a chance to pray and strengthen yourself, keeping yourself on God from the enemy. Because remember, he is looking for a way to get in. And the Bible tells us, let us not give him no place. Let's submit to God and resist the devil so that he will flee. And how you submit to God is by getting in his presence, standing in his word, hearing his voice. Don't be roaming around on the phone or on social media talking about all your problems. Because all it's going to do is work you up. Work that anger back up. Keep you from walking in forgiveness. You know, you want to you wanna be able to move on and have yourself walking in strength. So when you do hear something... Or when you are approached by your spouse or when they do contact you, you'll know how to handle that, you know, come with the right strategies and the, the right weapons against the enemy. I know you all done saw that movie War Room. That movie is very powerful. And for some of you have, that have never watched it, you need to watch it because in that movie, that lady, the, older, the elderly lady in there who's talking to Priscilla, you all know her in the movie. Uh, actually, it's Tony Evans' daughter. Um, who's now a minister, she played in that. And um, you can see that the older woman, I'm sure you all know, you know, they haven't seen the movie, she, how she was talking to, to her in the movie, talking to Priscilla in the movie, wanting her to understand that how the enemy is working. The best thing you can do, she says, is pray for your husband's heart and don't play in the hands of the enemy. Don't get in there and argue with your husband. You know, because all it's going to do is destroy your marriage in the end. So it's best to be quiet, you know, especially us wise. We must walk in that meek and gentle spirit, the Bible says, which is so precious to God. And for those that are not obeying God, talking about us wives, if your husband not obeying God, Peter says, then your godly behavior will win them over when they see that gentle spirit you have. But how can you walk in gentleness when you weak? How can you walk in gentleness when you've been on the phone gossiping and talking bad about your spouse? How can you walk in gentleness when you frustrated or when you hadn't had a chance to just calm down, you know, and, and ease your mind and your thoughts and get your mind off of all the, the, the confusion in your world or you had a long, hard day at work, you know, you, by the time you hear anything 
that your husband has to say to you, especially if it's not, you know, good things that is coming out of his mouth. Well, what's going to happen? You're going to react. You're going to get upset, maybe hang the phone up in his face and tell him, you know, what you've been wanting to tell him. You know how we do, guys. You know, we we hold on to all this unforgiveness and we repl- we begin to replay all the things that they've done us. And what it's going to do is build up anger in our emotions. And the enemy, gonna, that's he going to use that. That's when he's going to strike. He's going to strike, I'm telling you. He sees when we haven't been in our word. He sees when he sees when you haven't been in prayer, seeking the Lord so that you could be strong. He sees when that that whole arm is not on you. He could see. The Bible says he's seeking who he can devour. The enemy is looking for weaknesses. He's looking for a way in. And so this is why the Lord told the disciples, "Pray lest you go enter into those temptations." He says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, meaning you cannot do what's right in your own strength. You see, the Lord was always strong. He was a man of prayer. And so when you when you haven't been in prayer, when you haven't been hearing the word of uh, good, uh, something good and positive, you, you're going to lose your strength when you think on the negative things. And so the enemy is going to say, I got them right there. They don't have their armor on. Now I'm going to send that husband to come and attack them or that wife to come and attack, to come and attack them. Or I'm going to make sure this, this bad news, they hear about it, you know, because I got them. I'm going to get them to fall right here. And so this is what's going to really run their spouse off and make them go file, you know, for divorce. Yeah, I, I see that Christian, you know, how weak they are right now. I can get them right here because that's what the Bible said. You know, that's what the enemy tried to do our Lord in the wilderness. He was trying to find a way to get in, you know, by either twisting the scriptures. Y'all know what I'm talking about in Luke 4. You see how the Lord was in the wilderness and the enemy came and, and he kept coming with him with the word. The Lord kept doing that, saying it is written. It is written. You know, everything the enemy tried to say, the law was coming with their word. But at the end of that, you find that the Bible says that Satan left him until he could find the next opportunity. See, that's what the enemy is doing. He's looking for an opportunity to get in. Don't give him no place. Stay prayed up. Stay strong. You know, like in the beginning, I remember when, when I had first saw all these things happening with my husband. You know, when he started getting himself involved in these false teachings and I began to see his behavior starting to change, you know, and he had this attitude like, you know, this is how I'm going to live my life. You know, uh, and if you don't like it, then oh, well. And I saw how he wanted me to fall in that same doctrine, but I refused to. And I saw where this thing was about to take my family and my, you know, our children because they wanted to put me under that same, my husband wanted to put me up under that, bring me up under those teachers. And I said, oh no, I'll, oh no. And then I began to see the danger that was coming. I saw how eventually, you know, this was going to destroy our marriage. And so I never forget, I was so angry at the time I wasn't thinking. And I made this statement. I said, you know, I wish we, I wish I would have never got married. I wish I would have never committed my life to you or, or, or never married you. Because look at this, look at this, what's happening. You know, this is not the man that I married. Now you've turned into someone else. And now I'm sorry that I ever even married you, you know, not thinking y'all what I was saying. And guess what happened? My husband used that against me. And that drove him even further away. And guess what? That's when you'll find a relationship might pop up. Or you may find them going join with people that's in agreement with them. And then what, what, what is going to happen? Because that's what they're going to do. They're going to go run and be with someone else who will accept them. You know, and we don't be thinking about these things. That's why you got to, you got to be strong. You got to be wise, sober, and vigilant, the Bible says, because the devil, your adversary, is is going about seeking who he can devour. And he's looking for those that are weak and don't know the word. And so, you know, I look back over that and I say, you know, if I knew then what I know now, I would have never said that because at the time my husband didn't understand that. He didn't want to hear me say, you know, uh, I wish I would have never even married you. 
you know, because he didn't understand that I was hurting. And I saw what, what all I was finna go, I saw where this was going. And I was saying, Lord, I don't need these troubles in my life. You know, guys, because I had felt like I had been through too much in my life as it is. I ain't have time for this kind of problem here. You come telling me you getting involved in this new doctrine, this other, this false religion. When we had been Christians, when we knew God, when we both served him, prayed together, when we, when we stood on the principles of God, how can you turn away from this truth that we both know is the truth? What have you gotten yourself into? And so, y'all, I was so hurt because I knew about this religion, this false religion that he had been involved in. I had heard about it. It's a horrible thing. It separates homes and families and marriages. And they put you up on all these laws and rules and regulations, guys. You know, bondage is what it is. And I was telling my husband, I can't live like this. No, we are free in Christ Jesus. You know, Paul talks about that being up under these old false teachings, how it brings bondage. And so I knew that I was in trouble. And so out of my, you know, emotions, not knowing that the devil was going to use these things that I said against me later on, I verbally spoke that to my husband because I was crying out. You know, I'm like, Lord, I wish I would have never done this. I, I, I trusted you. You said that you would be with me to death do us part. You, when we were together, we loved one another. We were friends. Now you're turning into someone else. And so I was basically saying, I'm so sorry I, I, that I trusted you. And so later on, guess what? That came back and was thrown in my face. Because that's one of the things my husband brought up. Well, you told me you were sorry you ever married me. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, I did say that. And no, you know what he said? Now you want to come to me because you sorry for what you said to me. So you see how they are turning on you. Not realizing you were crying, you were hurting. And that they they are the ones that brought this trouble, you know, in. And you 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 just was trying to reason with them. But see, that's what I'm saying. We have to use our words wisely. I didn't know that that was going to give my husband an excuse to go and do what he really wanted to do. You see, and that's how the devil do you. Uh, they, yeah, you're supposed to throw that back in your face. Everything you said, it's going to be like it be in the court of law. It's going to be used against you. And so this is why you have to, like the, like the laws tell us, you know, you got to remain silent. Lest every word you say will be used against you. You know, that's what the police will tell you. That's going to be brought up. And so you got to be smart. And so, I, you know, my husband, now when you try to come back to your husband or your spouse, you know, they gonna, they'll they use that against you constantly. You know, just to justify what they are doing. And so don't give the enemy no place, guys. You got to be smart. And so for you all, you know, that have not gone through this yet, and you and your husband or wife have not had, you know, no altercations or you at this point to where you have not really spoken anything bad towards your husband or wife, you know, as you all uh, has come into this trial. Be careful. Don't do it. Just just be quiet and then calm yourself down. And then y'all maybe could talk later, because if you are upset if you are upset in that moment, you're going to react wrong. And so my advice would be to stay prayed up constantly because you never know what phone, what kind of phone call you may get. You never know what, what, what type of news you may, may get of what you may see on Facebook. See me, I, I don't, I don't do Facebook to be honest, guys. That's not me. You know, I'm, I'm like a more quiet I don't really, you know, get involved in that face Facebook. I'm not really a big social media person, to, to be honest. It's okay, you know, but I just rather not because, you know, it's just something that I don't do. But, you know, it's, if, it's, if you all love it, love it. But if you're on there, don't be looking and searching of things where you may hear bad news concerning your spouse because the enemy going to feed off of that. Don't give him no place protect your heart and your mind so you can stay focused on the promises of God that everything is going to turn around but anyway Paul was saying so so you guys 
love your, you know, be be gentle to your spouse now. Begin to receive them back. You have maybe spoken or said some hurtful things to them, like Paul was telling them. You've punished them enough. Now receive them back because you don't want to give the enemy no place. And it is it will discourage them and make them go out there and do something even worse. And also, you know, the Bible says that we have to let our light shine. This is what will win your spouses over. I, I know that, you know, you, you be upset and angry and hurt. The Bible says get angry, but that's not sin. It's be quick to hear and slow to speak and slow to get angry. Because you're going to bring forth, it's going to bring forth ungodliness. It's, it's not going to bring forth the righteousness of God when you react out of anger. And so I pray that this all has blessed you and, and every, you know, kind of pay attention, you know, to, to the teachings that's, that's going to be coming up next, because I'm going I'm to constantly reveal and unveil how the enemy works. So you all want to constantly be on the lookout for many more of videos that's going to be coming out, because that's really what I'm, you know, I, I, like I say, I can talk about the things the enemy do all day long because I, I I had to find out what type of enemy that I was dealing with you know so I, I made sure I did a deep study on this these whole almost three years that I've been standing for my husband because like I said it's that's what compelled me to really see what type of enemy I was dealing with and how to stop him and I'm glad you know that the Lord had had taught me a lot of things and I'm still learning of course because this is going to prepare it'll prepare you for later on you know for whatever trial may come your way you know after God restore your marriage you never know what other trouble might come so you, you can always use these same principles over and over you know stay prayed up stay in your word stay focusing on what is good and lovely and honorable of a good report um Stay, you know, keeping your eyes focused on what God promised you. Stay away from all the negative talk, you know, and that is what would keep that whole armor on. And, and you know, one day I, I'm sure I'm going to talk about the whole armor. Break that down for us in, in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10 on down. I think you all need to see a bigger picture of what Paul is talking about, which is all really is he's talking about the word of God being the armor. So I don't want to hold you guys too long. Like I say, I can't do it all in one, you know, message. I don't want to keep you all all day. So I'll be coming back later, you know, with a little bit at a time and let you all meditate on what you are hearing. I don't want to put too much on you and confuse you because it takes time for us to get a hold of these teachings because they they are very powerful. And actually, they are some they are they are new to a lot of us. A lot of you all, it's, these things are new to, so it's going to take time for you to really get an understanding. So anyway, I pray and hope that I've covered everything um, here, and this has answered some of you all questions and has given you all some type of instructions that you can go with and run with and practice them. And that way you'll find that things is starting to turn around, you're seeing peace back coming your way you'll know how to you know uh communicate better with your spouses so that it can bring healing into your marriage and, and you'll know how to play your cards right and be expecting the worst you know when not expect the worst but actually whenever the worst may try to come you'll know how to handle it so anyway i want to pray with you all so i can jump off of here and let you all finish doing what you all need to do but I want to pray right now. Father, we just thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that you are given each and every one of us. We thank you that you are with us in all that we do. I pray, Father, that you would give the people strength, that you would give them the courage to do, Lord God, what you are instructing them to do. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that their eyes will be open and their ears in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will speak to their spouses in the name of Jesus and that no wickedness, Lord, in Jesus' name, that they will be out there doing right now but that they will you will bring them into unto repentance lord god that all this madness and foolishness foolishness will end in jesus name that there will be peace lord god 
with them in their spouses and in their marriages, that each and every one of our marriages would be just like yours, Lord God. You and the church being one, and we receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for peace and love and a a sound mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, people of God. God love you, and I love you, and I want to thank all of you for joining with me on today. Until next time, bye-bye.